Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I have a repotting and staking video for you and this video is all about my two beautiful plants I have down next to me here. This is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen and my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and today I've decided that I am going to put these two plants in this one terracotta pot together so that they can climb up this beautiful frame, this metal frame I have beside me here and make me a beautiful cathedral of Hoya plants. And I can't wait to get these plants together in this frame. I think they're going to be absolutely beautiful. And these plants are often spoken about together because they have the opposite kind of variegation going on in them. So the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen has green in the middle and the variegation of cream whitey pink on the edge. And the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess has the green around the edge of the leaves and then the variegation of cream and pink and white in the middle of the leaves. And I think these two plants are just going to look wonderful growing together. They're exactly the same plant. They are just different cultivars. So they are going to do fine together and it saves me some space. <laughs> so first of all, let me just bring the two plants in closer so you can see the difference between them. And then I'm just going to get on with the repotting. So here are my two beautiful plants on their rings here. This is how I bought these plants. But you can see my Crimson Princess is growing out a lot of tendrils and wants to carry on growing up. And this plant here, my Crimson Queen, is looking beautiful around this lovely frame. But they want to vine up and look much bigger and beautiful, right? So, when I do this, I could end up snapping tendrils. I could end up breaking leaves off. And if I do that, I will go ahead and propagate all of those parts. So there's no problem with this. I've made other videos about how to propagate my Hoya plants and I'll put the links below the video and you can see the link above if you're on a computer. <laughs> so, let's just get on with unraveling these plants and see how this is going to play out. So, I've chosen a terracotta pot because these plants do not like to be oversaturated with water, otherwise they will get root rot quite quickly. Although they do like to dry out a little bit between watering, they mustn't be left dry for too long because their tender, thin roots will dry out, crisp up and just disappear and the plant will of course fade away unless you get in and propagate it quick enough to start the process off again. So, you need to keep it watered let them dry out and water again and that's why terracotta is perfect because if you're going to go in and water and you're worried you did too much you know that the water will be able to evaporate out the sides top and bottom of this pot because it has a big hole in the bottom too so the soil mix i've made myself is a mixture of a gardening mix and in that i've placed two cups of lecker balls two cups of perlite a handful of biochar and also three or four big handfuls of big pieces of wood bark to mix into the mix. This will all keep the soil aerating and loose. I've also put about a big cup of sand in this soil. So I want to make sure the soil doesn't compact together. It keeps breaking up and it keeps loose so that oxygen can circulate around the roots in the soil and also so that when I water, the water will be able to run through the soil if it should be too much and evaporate out easily. It's very important to make sure you do all that to keep these plants as happy as possible. You're always going to buy these plants in a nursery pot which is plastic and small. These plants do like to be pot bound and that will keep them happy for a while and then you're going to have to repot them, but be careful, as I said, with their roots. It's not suggested normally to go and put your Hoyas into a big pot of soil, especially if you're doing that in a plastic pot, because you'll end up overwatering and rot them out. But because I'm using a terracotta pot, and I use a water gauge when I water my plants, I know that I will be okay with repotting them into this bigger pot. 
and I'll know that I won't have to repot them for a very long time after that. They'll be able to stay like this for a couple of years. So let me just get on. The first thing I need to do is put some soil at least halfway up in this pot because these uh, pots they're in are very small and this is much deeper. So we'll just get on with that first. A big piece of bark to put over the hole at the bottom and this shows you how big the bark is that I've put in there, quite big pieces. And that will break down and keep giving nutrients to these plants. They're going to love it. So now I want to get my bare hands in the soil. I just love this moment. I love the smell of it. I love the texture. I love feeling that I am in the soil. So let me get this soil in the pot. This is just so much fun. <laughs> so I'm just going to take one of my plants here to test how deep I need to go with the soil. And that was round about perfect. So I know I don't need to put any more in the pot right now, but how I'm going to get these plants in this frame this time, because in between the patterning, there isn't that much space. And I'm going to have to unbind these plants first to be able to get them up inside this plant. And that could be a bit of a palaver. Have a look at this frame closer up. Look at this gorgeous frame. Look at the top, isn't that gorgeous? And look at the shape. And this is metal and will last a long, long time with this plant. So if I should put it in the pot already, you can see it's like this. That's the way it's going to be. And at the moment, while I'm going to be sorting out my plant, you won't be able to see the top, but that is going to be gorgeous. But I'm going to have to put my plant in first and we'll see how I do. Right, I'm going to start with the Crimson Queen because that has only two tendrils growing in the pot. So I should be able to get those placed in here quick and easier first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four segments because there's obviously four vines. So a Crimson Queen here at the front, a Crimson Queen at the back, and a Crimson Princess at the side, and a Crimson Princess at the side. So when they grow up, they will merge together. I think it's going to be wonderful. Right, first plant. Let's get this unraveled first before I start taking it out of the cover pot. I hope this is going to go easily because these aren't actually tied together with any twine or anything like that. They're just round and round and round, and I think I should be able to get them off this. Oh no, there is a little bit of twine here. I was wrong. There is a little bit of twine to hold it together, so I'm going to have to cut all that off to get this plant completely off this arch. Cut that. Let's have a look. Yeah, no, I need to get the twine out. Twine must come out. So now let's get this around and off the arch. It's going pretty okay for now. It's not too bad. Just all this twine really doesn't need to be here. Get all the twine off and then in again here. Oh, see? And around through again. This is getting longer and longer. So that's there. Obviously the twine was there for a purpose, but I don't need it now. So I really want to get this out. So I'll just cut these pieces of twine that are at the bottom here and they're not going to be in my way. So I have the first vine, which is on that one over there, which is quite interesting. Now I need to get the second, or oh, what's going on here? Now I have, ah, I have one more here. How is this going on? Aha, uh -huh. you know what? I've just discovered that this was just one vine, but because it's vined all the way around and down to the bottom, it's rerouted itself into the bottom, which means it's perfect for me because I can just go and prune that back now and make two separate vines straight away. I'm sure that's what's happened with this. Most definitely is, yes. I'm wondering if I can't just get the arch Oh, out of the pot. Yes, I can. So there, if I get the arch out, I should be able to unravel now this vine, this very, very long vine from the arch. And that will make it much easier for me to get the rest out now. And this string out of my way. Arch here. 
coming off quite easily as I go. So I can't just pull out the other arch piece. Oh, I'm just going to now get this arch out of this plant like this. Oh dear. So finally, the arch is out. And I have found that I have just one long vine here. If you look at this, one long vine. But on this long vine, as I said, this part here had reached the soil. So that had made a new segment. And I'm going to prune that and repot it on its own to make my two longer vining pieces. I might as well. So let's just do that and we'll hope that we're going to encourage a lovely new vine to grow. So it's off. There we go. I have my two vines now. So I need to get that into the soil as quickly as possible and I'll have to keep this part moist to keep all of this going. Put that down in front for a minute because I need to take this one out of its soil. <clears throat> So, not much of a problem there. Just got string all around the bottom of it that I want to get off so it's not strangling the plant in any way. Make sure you do that. If you have any string, make sure you get all that out so it doesn't strangle the plant. So, that is there at the front, ready to be repotted right there. And I have my piece here that I'm going to put at the back and repot right here. But to do that, I'm going to need more soil because I don't want to bury all of the leaves and everything else that's going on with this part of the plant too much. So I've made a little mound here and this will be placed there. But this one I can actually wait with. I'm going to rest it in some water for now so that those roots there don't dry out. So I just got me a container of water. I'll just let this lay there on the side for a minute. Right, well that means that I need to get quickly on with my Crimson Princess, which is growing all sorts of vines all over the place. And I'm not quite sure how this one's looking. We'll soon see. I have one from the middle of the pot that I need to unravel here straight away first. That's that one. Okay, so we'll get that down. That's good. And I have pieces here in the middle that need to just come out from the middle. And I'm not sure if I'm going to... No, it's very hard to find the ends of the tendrils sometimes, so be very careful when you're doing this, trying to relieve it from its arch, if you want to keep the height and you don't want to snap too many and start doing propagations, because you don't have to worry if you do that, you can just propagate, but you just won't have the height in your new frame, if you do that. On this plant, there are a lot of external tendrils growing out of the main tendril, which is really exciting, because they're going to look wonderful around the frame, so I really would like to try not to break or damage any of those while unraveling the others. I'm having a really hard time figuring out if this is more than one vine or if it's just one long vine again. So I'm going to try and have to just pull out this frame if I can. And to do that, I think I need to lift the plant up out of its pot and have a look what's going on down here at the bottom here. Now this one does have a couple of separate plants, I'm sure. I can see that here now. So I might be able to just prise those apart. Somehow I have a little plant here that's grown in amongst, oh, I've just broke a leaf off. We can propagate that. Um, I have a little plant here that is separate and I want to get that there. Now look at this, this little plant here is separate, lots of roots. So that was one little cutting, that was perfect, because I'll have a place for that. And that has made it easier for me now to try and remove the frame. I'm going to have to lay the plant down a moment to get this frame to start unravelling, because it's, it's not very easy at all. So now, 
I, this one, luckily, I do have different plants. So I can rest this here and start unraveling this side now. Mess and dirt everywhere, but I don't worry about that, do I? Now, this is starting to unravel, which is great news. There we go, with an external vine growing. And we're getting there now. We're starting to get there. It's not easy. So as I said, when you do this, be very careful if you don't want to snap everything. <laughs> so now I've got a second plant. Oh, what a monster this one is. I'll show you all of these a little bit close in a moment. So that's the second one, beautiful. And now I just need to get the last of this one off this arch. And it's not that easy because they have like tooths at the end, these arches, these specific arches, which are making it much more difficult to get everything off. I only have the little last bit left, so why don't you just give me freedom to get it out? There we go. There we go. Off at last. So now, before I plant these, I just want to show you the different segments close up. This pot actually had a few lovely plants. Now, look at the roots on this one. Very small. And at the front, you can see a lot of plant going on. And that is absolutely amazing and brilliant for putting in the new frame. So I'm very happy about that one. And then I had this long one here. You can see they don't have many roots, these plants. That little root ball is keeping all of this thick, luscious piece of the plant alive and external vines coming out and thick with leaves. It's absolutely beautiful. And then I had a third plant, this little one here. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. So now I've got my Crimson Queen at the front there a piece of the Crimson Princess at the side there, another piece of the Crimson Princess at this side here. I need to turn them upside down. I'm not thinking the right way around here. They need to be upside down so that when they come up the frame, they'll be the right way around, right? I need to turn this one around that way, turn this one upside down this way. And then I have which is perfect, this piece of the Crimson Princess to put in the middle, to keep the middle bushy, and my piece of Crimson Queen that I'll be putting at the back after. So now, I need to be able to hold these pieces into place, so I've got to. I'll put this one in last. I'll plant that last. I need to start, um, oi, potting these up. As you can see, they're top heavy and everything, so they need to be potted up straight away to hold them in place, because they're not on their frame yet. So just a little bit of fast forward here while I get my hands in the dirt, which I just love. So I think before I plant uh, the last piece over there in, I'll just put this Crimson Princess in the middle because that's important. Get that in there. This was absolutely perfect because I'm not going to have a bare middle of this plant pot. This plant is full of leaves and it's covered the whole middle area. So it looks wonderful, like it's always been like this. So that's in place. Now, the absolutely hard part, and it's going to be a bit of a juggle, is putting all of this inside the frame. But I'm going to try this as best I can. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> so the first one inside the frame, Hang it there a little minute so that I can get myself oof, a little bit higher up all the time. Now, this is really going to be difficult. I am not, I knew this was going to be a challenge before I started. I really did, but we'll see. We'll get a lot of this in there. So that's holding that up in there. And then I need to get every single piece in under. So I've got a long piece here now that also needs to get in and be held up. Believe me when I say the struggle is real, it really is real because these are holding on to all sorts of stuff on the way up and leaves are dropping off. To be expected, 
I know. I don't make life easy for myself sometimes. But beauty, well, you know what they say about beauty sometimes. <laughs> beauty can sometimes be a little bit of pain. Let's see, right, that's there. And now I have this mass that I need to kind of get in under the bottom part. I think I'm just going to shove everything in for now and do some sorting out when I get the bottom of the frame actually in place. Because as long as I get most of the tendrils in and up, now I need to check where the front is as well at the same time here, and where I'm sticking in these legs so they're not damaging the plant. Okay, this frame is quite heavy, so I'm going to have to place it in where I feel that it's going to be, and then try to find my vines as I go along now. Oh dear, I think the whole bottom of this part needs to get in under there. What I'm needing to do is to get the leaves above the lower rim of the frame. And that is what's a little bit difficult at the moment, bit of a challenge, to make sure they're all inside. This side is going quite well with that regard, but I do have some tendrils that are out on the wrong side with leaves. I need to get those in and up, and that's good. It's going quite well. So I'll turn it around now, see how this side is doing. Push a little bit further down as I go with the, the frame. Now I need to look at this side. Oh dear, I've got huge parts of the frame here and the plant on the wrong side. Um, so let's get what we can see up first. So I have this one here. Long and beautiful, get that up and around its frame segment. This is just so wonderfully therapeutic for me. <laughs> I am really enjoying myself doing this, even though it is hard work at the same time getting all these vines into place. So, as you can see by all the fast forwarding, this is taking me a pretty long time to get all of these leaves in under the lower part of the metal frame inside. And then I've got to try and sort them out and get them up as high up on the frame as possible. And it really is a bit of a challenge, I'm telling you. So, let me see. I've got this. Crimson Queen here, looking wonderful. So I want to put this in and out around the frame now. So I'm going to bring it back down, if I can, without damaging it. And put it outside the frame down here. So I'm getting leaves outside the frame here. There we go. And then I shall start tying it up back inside the frame. So it's not that I wanted the whole thing inside like that. I want it in and out going around the frame. So we've got this now. That looks beautiful. It needs to have one more around here. And then I'll be ready to go up to the next segment. That's about winding it around. These tendrils are very delicate. Um, so whatever snaps, snaps. And whatever works, works, and I'll be very happy with that. So that looks good. Looks like that's been like that all the time. So now up to the next level, and I can twine it around here too, with its leaves. And now, this has made it all the way up over halfway and that looks amazing and there's an extra external and there's an extra external tendril coming out here so i'll be able to put that up somewhere else afterwards i'm not worried about if the frame's straight right now i'll be able to rock that into place after just need to get all the tendrils into place so let's see what i have here i have a crimson princess here and it's all muddled up so I don't know what's what and where. I can feel I have a tendril here that is going to be perfect to go up the middle here, I can see. And, oh, it's pretty long. Oh, that's great. That's quite long. So that is going to go 
around this part here that's a cross segment. So I might as well go around, get this in under. And this piece here is actually reverted back to green. I can see that it's perfect. And it is going to go along this side piece here. And then carry along up here. So that's perfect as well. That one's up. Looks very good and has an auxiliary um, tendril coming up there as well. So now I have another one here. That's a little auxiliary one. I'll bring that out here. Now I've decided I'm just going to go in and twine them around exactly where they fit by themselves. So this one here, I can see, should be part of this main frame over here. So I'm going to have to go back in and bring it around inside the next one here. So that's here now and get that up there. So that one's there and this one needs a little bit of twine. Yes, some of these tendrils do need a little bit of twine to help them into place until they get long enough to hold on themselves. But most of them are long enough and they look absolutely wonderful as I twine them around already. So I have a big vine here that needs to come up the middle here, I can see. And it's got its auxiliary vine here that needs to come through this side. So this one, oh, with this auxiliary, Vine, I need to take this through here actually. Right, so this one is out as well. I am getting there slowly but surely, but it takes a bit of time to make this look wonderful. I basically lost track of time doing this because I was just having so much fun. Look how this is turning out. It looks spectacular. I have one tendril here that is snapped giving me a perfect opportunity to make a propagation while the rest of the plant carries on growing. So that is all of the main plant now in place and my centerpiece is also great. Yes. So now I have my last piece of Crimson Queen to plant down the bottom here straight into the pot. And there we have it. Just give that a little bit of twine actually, because it's not so tied up. So here I have my wonderfully finished, repotted and restaked Hoya Canosa Crimson Princess and Crimson Queen together in one pot and they are nearly at the top of my beautiful new frame here. And you can see my Hoya pubicalic splash behind me here that I did around a month ago. And it is still doing beautifully in its frame with its lovely terracotta pot. So I know that the transformation of that plant worked and I hope that these plants are going to be able to carry on and be happy in their frame. It was a bit of rough going with this plant because there was much more bushiness in the bottom and not as much space inside the frame to pull all the tendrils around to get them wind around the frame here. And well, I managed to get this done with only breaking a couple of tendrils and a couple of leaves. So I hope it will be able to just carry on as it is, looking beautiful and majestic up this frame now. So now I just want to take you in for a closer look of this plant in its new frame all the way around. So let's have a closer look at this wonderful combination of plants. And here at the front you can see the beautiful Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen with its lovely variegation around the edge of the leaves and the green inside. And as we go up towards the top of the frame, you can see the wonderful shapes in the frame and how it turns into a kind of dome at the top. And I can't wait for these Hoyas to reach right up to the top, all the way over and bush out all the way around this frame. It's just going to be spectacular. And down here at the bottom, you can see that it's already very thick and bushy. 
with the two types of Hoya. And I really love these light colored terracotta pots that I've put this in. So it should be fine for watering and drying out in between. And now look here, you can see much more of the beautiful Hoya Canosa Crimson Princess with the variegation in the middle of the leaves and the green around the edge. And look at the beautiful yellowing going on in it. And there is so much. Look at these leaves here. They've actually reverted back to more of a dark green color. So there are all sorts of tones going on now in this one frame. And the dark green leaves here, they look like the Hoya Canosa Crinkle 8, actually. But it's not. It's all Hoya Canosa Crimson Queen and Hoya Canosa Crimson Princess, as you can see in these beautiful pink leaves here. And these ones that have reverted back to green on my Crimson Princess. And they just look lovely, merged together. Look here, you can see all the different leaves and the different styles and shapes and tonations. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm so pleased that I decided to plant all these up together to be able to give this opportunity to see all of the contrast and to see that you can go in and do things like this, no problem at all. Now look into the middle of this frame, it's completely full of leaves in the middle, so there's going to be lots more tendrils that will start coming up and join the rest around the edge until this is completely matted out with leaves. <laughs> I love these lovely burgundy stems that contrast against the green stems you see here as well on the Crimson Queen. It's such a lovely, stylish way of putting your Hoyas together. And it gives them so much more space to grow up and spread out and do what they love to do, which is vine up and find lots more space. And while we're at it, I thought I would show you my beautiful Hoya Pubicalyx Splash which is also growing up its lovely frame here, all the way up to the top. Now, this wasn't at the top when I first planted it, but it's already reached the top and started leafing out and looks wonderful. So it's very happy with its new life with this frame and this terracotta pot too. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing this lovely plant close up and how you can go in and transform a plant that you've gone and bought out there that might be on an arch or a ring and you want to vine it up a lovely frame of your own choice and to really extend the tendrils so you can really see the amount of plant that you have and also to mix different cultivars or varieties of the same Hoyas together to save you space and to be able to enjoy the different variations of the leaves in one pot because why not? They are exactly the same plants, they have the exact same requirements, so there is no problem putting your Hoyas in together if you wish, and I think this is going to be beautiful like that. So now I just want to show you, down here at the bottom I have a couple of leaves from my Hoya Canosa Crimson Princess that fell off. And I will let these callus over for a couple of hours, and then I'm going to put these into a pot with soil put them in my Mars Hydro grow tent with the grow light and see if they will propagate. And with the leaves, this could take quite a while, could probably take over a month or two months or more. But we'll see. If they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But I will give them a chance. As for the tendrils that snapped off, I have this little one here. This is a side tendril that was growing on my Crimson Queen and it is growing out a new leaf there and here at the side and it's carrying on an extension from the top there. So I will put this into a little vase. I have a lovely little vase here. I will put this in there, see if it can stand up itself, otherwise I might need to put some twine around it. No, this tendril was a little bit too thin to be able to hold itself up in the vase. So I'm going to tie some twine around it and that little piece of twine is merely just to hold the top of this tendril from sinking right down into this vase. So now I have this wonderful piece of Crimson Queen tendril and I hope it's going to produce me some lovely roots and then I'll be able to pot it up.
So that's great. Next, I have this longer piece that snapped off. And before anything else, look at these beautiful leaves. They've got a lovely pink flush going on and a lovely pink tendril here with leaves ready to come out there. It's continuing at the top. It has a leaf there and leaves there. So if I should want to make the most of this tendril here, I'm not going to just put this in the pot as it is because then it will just grow roots out of the bottom there. I want to have more chances of success, of course, and more areas of roots to have more tendrils to be able to put into a pot and make a bushy little plant on its own. So just above these two leaves here, I will go in and prune back. So all of this stem has the ability to produce roots. I will go in and cut above this leaf here and then all of this stem will have the chance to grow roots too. And there's a segment of leaves here and I will do the same there. So I am going to have four areas of leaves. So let's just get on with this because I have a lovely vase here that I'm just going to put all of these cuttings into. So the first one, just above the set of leaves, cut that. There you go, it looks like that. That is an absolutely perfect cutting. And if you go back and look at my Hoya Carnosa video, you will see how the roots come out. So it's no problem in the bars. I have a leaf here. So of course I want to go and cut above that. And the next set I'm going to cut above those two. So these are the smaller pieces. And because they're so small, I'm going to have to put a bit of twine around all three of them to hold them up so they don't just slide down into the water. So I'll just do that quickly and put them in to propagate. So there we have them. That's the smaller pieces of tendrils we twine around to hold them up. You can look closer, there you go. You can see the leaf and the twine. So we'll just put these straight into the vase as well. And now they can't sink all the way down. So here we have all my wonderful cuttings ready to go on and do their thing in water. So within a month, these should have roots on them and be ready to be potted up again. So that is just wonderful. So just remember, you can always go in and rearrange your Hoyas and pot them together if you want to and put them on lovely frames or have them hanging down in groups, however you want to do it. Any tendril that breaks off, even the tiniest piece at the top, you can leave in water and it will start to produce roots. And to show you that, I am once again going to bring in a little tiny piece of tendril that I have been propagating in water now for a couple of weeks. And it has produced a root and it's starting to produce leaves. So let me show you that before I close off my video. So here it is. This is the second time I'm showing this piece of tendril that was an end piece and well I showed you the root last time and it's not grown much more so you can see the root there it actually has a few roots but they've stuck together because I've pulled it out of the water but not only that look here in the middle you can see that it is producing its first set of leaves and that shows you even the tiny end piece of a tendril will produce more leaves and roots. It's hard to see, but there are a second set of leaves and the end of it. But that little leaf there and one on the other side coming out and the root are proof. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. <laughs> Each part of a tendril on your Hoya can go on and become a lovely new plant. This has taken a couple of months. It could take a longer time when it's the end piece but it's still surviving. And I can see now closer up, there are two small leaves coming out here and it wants to grow out at the end. And there's two coming out there. Another beautiful little plant on its way. So anyway, that's all I have for you for the repotting and staking of my beautiful Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and Crimson Queen. So all I have to say now is Thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be uploaded and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye!